there we are. Hello, hello, everyone. <laughs> um, this is going to be about Thanksgiving because um, it's a wonderful time to celebrate. But I want to start out with prayer so you'll be in agreement with me. And uh, the more, well, there were two or three, but we got more. And uh, but there's power. I thank you, Jesus, for your anointing right now. Um, Jesus, take over everything I've planned. I submit it to you that you correct and um, that I'm depending on your spirit. Oh, God, according to Ephesians 1, 17, Father of glory, give us a, the spirit of wisdom and a revelation in the re re revelation of your son, Jesus Christ, that we know the hope of our calling. We know the exceeding greatness of your power, and we know the ins inheritance that we have in you. So we thank you that you're seated far above every principality and power. So we take authority over any demonic interference or any um, uh, on the internet or anything like that. It won't cut me off and that the friends will tune in. Uh, thank you, Jesus. We are going to rejoice before you, Father. So thank you. You've given us that authority. So we believe this is going to go a lot. Uh, um, uh, to other nations, to other nations, to know about the heritage that we have in America. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, I'm going to start. I have um, this book that Jack and I wrote. I'll show you this. So you can. It's backwards. I know. Heroes from our heritage. It's free on the internet. On our website, <clears throat> when we wrote it oh, 30 years ago, we were children's pastors, and the pastor had the theme of uh, Save America, and he wanted us to teach uh, the children about the pilgrims and the, what happened in America. So Jack and I did some research, and it changed my life, and I'll tell you when I wrote about Abraham Lincoln, I wrote about... Uh, um, the Pilgrims, and then when I wrote about uh, oh, 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 all the other ones, you can see um, mm, uh, it was so exciting. Christopher Columbus, oh, that was exciting. And do you know those people in those days had a, uh, they would write things down. They were really, and like George Washington, too. He would write things down, what was happening, and thank God for that. And the Pilgrims, uh, and William Bradford has gone to George Washington, George three chapters on George Washington, then Abraham Lincoln, then Jack did Douglas, Douglas MacArthur for two places. But what is so exciting to me is uh, I have a book of a man who actually wrote these stories. Um, William Bradford, he was the governor there of the colony. And it's his own writing, his own writing. He's got some pictures here of the Mayflower and so many in things that you don't hear about. I don't know, David Barton does a, it's a, a good historical things too. But anyway, I wanted to make it uh, relevant to today. Um, that uh, God made a covenant. God made a covenant with America, and we've fallen so far below what we promised because these pilgrims, they came here. Oh, they were real patriots because they laid their life on the line because it wasn't known how far America was. Well, there was a colony in the southern part of America it's called the Virginia Colony. Well, they applied to the king so that they could get a, a, a legally, they could stay there. But let me tell you, before it happened, um, they, they, they wanted to have freedom because um, the Church of England was not following God and they were oppressed and they had to follow and do all of these things. And they said, no, no, we need to be free. We need to have freedom of religion. 
And so they had uh, a wonderful church there, but then they were oppressed so much that, that a group of them went to the Netherlands and they stayed there for about 10 years. And then their children got involved in, in bad things in, in the Netherlands. And they said, this isn't working, this isn't. And they heard about this colony in America. The Virginia colony was south of the Hudson River. And they said, well, let's try to go there. So they worked and they sold their property. I mean, this man was very rich and he sold his property and everything. So many of them did. And they said, let's go to America. And we don't know what the, what do we call them, First Nations, <laughs> how savage they were. They thought they took their armor and they took their muskets and, and like the Spanish people did and their things because they didn't know how what they would encounter. But they did run into this man, if you can read it, on page 27 is where I'm starting. Uh, but they were so totally dedicated to God, they uh, said, we are going to go. So this man, John Weston, uh, uh, let's see, Thomas Weston, agreed to help them. And so they gave him his money, and he made a contract and everything. You say, you pay me back in seven years, because they thought, oh, they'd make a lot of, I don't know, in America, they thought hey, they could stay in the Virginia colony, and they'd meet up there, and then they'd have some houses planted for them. Well, that didn't happen. So they gave him his money, and he bought this, this ship. It was called the Speedwell. Well, it leaked terrible. It went out to sea with some people in it, and it had terrible leaks, so they had to return. So we said, okay, then I better buy another one. Well, they gave him more money, and they had to wait another month. Well, this is August, September, October, and they say, we want to go before it gets too cold. Well, Thomas Weston said, well, I need more money, and he said, oh, well, I'm, I'm going to take your, if you turn the page, Mm, those pilgrims, they knew what they, God had told them to come. They were going to have freedom of religion. So this Thomas Weston, he talked the God words, uh, and they believed him. He took his money, their money and everything about the Mayflower. But then he said, oh, no. Uh, but what they did is in the middle of the page there, uh, they had a day of fasting and prayer before their journey. And um, let's see, other strangers joined them. But anyway, this Thomas Weston, actually used by Satan, uh, changed the contract. Yeah, but the pilgrim did not knuckle under his demands, but uh, decided on a compromise. And this is where your death to self came in. They did. They condescend, consented to sell their needed provisions because they had a store. Well, we're going to need this much of, uh, of flour and all of these things and lemon juice and all of this. And they said, no. But they decided to knuckle under to his demands and decided on the compromise. They consented to sell their needed provisions to clear the haven and withal to put themselves upon great extremities, scarcely having any butter, no oil, not a soul to mend a shoe, nor every man's sword to his side, wanting many muskets, even iron. And yet they were willing to expose themselves to the hardship because they didn't want God. God's name to be dishonored. They had promised that they would go. Well, time went away and they had to eat up for uh, some of their provisions, but they said, we are going, we are going. So on August 5, they tried out and that, tell that ship fell apart and I had all these leaks. So then he got another ship. So it wasn't until September 19. Well, you know, in September 19, in, in the north there, it's starting to get cold already. But they said, we're going anyway, we're going anyway, we're going anyway. So they get on the ship and they're fasting and prayer. And they weren't all religious. They were not all pilgrims. Some was just the crew, you know, that could manage the ship. They were seamen. And they kind of laughed at the pilgrims and made fun of them. But God took care of them. 
But the pilgrims prayed and fasted and prayed and fasted, and they all got on, a hundred of them, a hundred and one. I even have a passenger list here, a partial passenger list of that. That was really amazing. So they got on. Man, they got out and they got out and they prayed and prayed. But now I want to say one day during the storm, Mayflower crossed the halfway mark and it's getting colder and colder, you know. And all of a sudden, it was a big boom and whatever. The mast broke. The the um the the that held the mast up there broke, and they thought, oh. Oh, we're doomed now. We can't grow. But then who is that? Now, William Brewster remembered that he had a um he had a screw in his printing press and they could take that screw out of his printing press and re reinsert that there and and patch it up and they were good to go again. But say they sure prayed and prayed and prayed. They were fasting and praying and God took care of them. Okay, so they can get back on the ship, or they're on the ship. Anyway, they're sailing away there, and all of a sudden they come, oh, we're coming to land. We see some land over here. This is in, uh, let's see, November 5. Mm, they spied land in the distance, and they all oh, praise God. The land was identified as Cape Cod. That's way up near New York, and it's kind of cold there because it's November. November, it's starting to snow, and it's freezing there. Uh, so anyway, they're able to land, and but they don't know what's, what's ahead, if there's Indians there or whatever. Uh, so they encountered yet another challenge, because when they got, they're going south, and they want to get to the Virginia colony. Well, God, <laughs> their plan. <laughs> it's... Well, I can laugh now, but anyway, they had a hard time because a big storm came up. They could not land where they had planned to be under the jurisdiction, under the power of the Virginia colony and obey their rules. But the wind came up and drove the ship north, and it kept going north and north and north. And they thought, oh, oh we're going to have to make our own contracts because we're going to have to make our own laws because everybody isn't a Christian. They're not all pilgrims. So they got together and they fall, saw this land, and it was Cape Cod. If you, I haven't got the map here, but anyway, they saw it, and they were so thrilled. But they said, this, the pastor there said, we have to make a Mayflower compact, and this is what our Constitution and part of our George Washington heard about these things. And um, the pastor from back in the old land said, you got to make a contact. And everybody gets off of that ship has to obey because you've got to have some governing there. You can't just let everybody do what they want to. This is a new land, but you're going to have to obey. So they came up with this Mayflower Compact. But what is so interesting about this? Oh, we got some more people. Wonderful. Okay, they said, well, then we're going to have to obey God. We're going to sign this compact here, and it's based on biblical principles. Biblical principles. And so they signed it, and they promised, hello, they promised that they would obey the governor. And the, the Carver was his name. So they, they, they're going to obey. And they all promised their life. And they thought, this is all new territory. It's kind of cold out here, November 9, in North America. That's pretty cold. But they said, we promised, and we're going to obey, and we're going to do what our pastor told us to do. And everybody had to sign it, even the seamen that were on, on the ship there. So they landed there, and they signed all of this, and they thought, well, let's see, what are we going to find when we go on to land? So they have a little boat, and they land, and they go on to the land, and sure enough, there's some, they call them First Nations people. <laughs> well, let's call them, they were Indians. <laughs> God bless them. But anyway, they got, the Indians got scared, and they ran away. <laughs> they thought, oh, here we got our armor and our helmet and everything. Well, then the next day, some more Indians came, and they started shooting at them with arrows. And they thought, 
oh, 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 this is that really something. And so they would make a place where they could sleep at night, and they heard all these noises like wolves crying off in the distance and it was the Indians that were trying to scare them off. <laughs> But they knew it was it, it. There were no animals there, but they saw, and they said, "No, we are not going to be afraid. God brought us here, and we are committed that God's name is going to be honored. And we signed this contract, this compact, that we would obey God, we would obey our government and our governor." And so. Um, they went back to the boat and they, they looked over the land and another day they looked around and do you know what? God had something really marvelous planned for them. You know, they had kind of eaten up their provisions because it was delayed and delayed and delayed. They went to this one spot here and it was leveled out and they found underneath the ground some cooking utensils and a big iron pot with corn inside, various kinds of corn. And they were delighted. They thought, oh, some Indians must have lived here before and left this. But we're, uh, thank you, God, <laughs> we found some food because they didn't have much to eat anymore after all that voyage. So they got the corn and they said, well, we better not eat it all because spring is coming and we're going to have to plant some in the ground and we're going to need some. So it was different kinds of corn and I don't know um, what else it was, but they found this big kettle there. And then they also found, found a spring of water, fresh water, because you can't drink the seawater, you know, it's salty water. So this Indian, I'm saying, in the, in the, when they landed, uh, then they found a spot, a ground that was cleared. And they thought, this, this must have been some settlement years ago. And it was. God led him to that very spot that the, that the, the dirt was leveled and the trees were out and the it goes back in history that there was a tribe there that did live and smallpox came. And so it wiped out the people. And this is part of our next story about Squanto. He was there. But anyway, they rejoiced and they had a hard time. But anyway, um, as the months went on, it was cold and it froze and it froze and it froze. And they had to cut down trees. They had no place to sleep. The seamen wanted to go back to uh, to England again, and they wanted. They said, "Oh, we got to go back. We got to go back." So they had no wood except they had to cut down the trees, and the trees were frozen, and they all had to work. But there were only what out of out of let's see, out of a hundred and one, there were only seventeen men. Ten of them there were women. Fourteen children. I got the uh, the list here. And I thought, oh my goodness, they got the flu because this Thomas Weston took all of their lemon juice. They got the scurvy. You know, you got to have your vitamin C. Well, anyway, they got sick and they started dying. But do you know, God bless, thank you. They're martyrs, they're in heaven and maybe they're looking at us now like they don't give up. God has made a covenant with America. Even though we've fallen away so greatly, God doesn't forget his covenant. You know what he made with covenant with Abraham for the land of Israel? All of the covenants he's made for America. He doesn't forget, even though we're unfaithful, God has a covenant with America. And so these people, many of them, half of them died that first winter because they got the scurvy and then they got the flu. And those that were able-bodied worked and clean, washed their clothes and took care of them and kept building and building and building. Some of the children died. Some of the, um, half of the men died. Half of them. So here we are. Let's see. Well, let me go to our book here. If you want to give out one of our books, honey. Uh, let's see. another one? Mm, no, I guess not. That's it. Okay, it's called The Starving Time on page 32. Six or seven. This is the man. Governor Bradford wrote this. 
the six or seven men, sound persons, and spared no pains, night or day, but with abundance of toil and hazard to their own health, fetched wood, made fires, dressed their meat, made their beds, washed their loathsome clothes, and all this willingly and cheerfully without grudging one bit, showing their true love. These are pilgrims. These are, um, where are we now? They died. They died. They gave their life because they wanted freedom of religion and they were willing to get their life on the line and they did not want God's name dishonored. They said, we are going anyway. We made a promise and we are going to this new land, even though they didn't land where they had wanted to. God brought them a new land. But, and then he had him this, find this kettle with all this corn in it. And he found the land there. And he found the, the water. Oh, probably frozen by then. But anyway, let's see. And yet the Lord upheld these all these persons. They were not at all infected, the ones who took care of the sick ones. Their reward is with the Lord. So it's like, what a comp. How how did they do that? So it shows here, what have we got? We got a warm house, don't we? We got food. No, we got a freezer. And we know our authority over sickness, and we got orange juice, and we got all of these things. But do we die to ourselves? There might be some time coming when we're not going to be able to get what we want. But God still had a plan. Now, the next chapter is page 39. These men called William Bradford and Squanto, God had these all prepared, like God has everything prepared for us, dear friends, everything prepared for us. Plans formed long ago in perfect faithfulness for each one of us, for our destiny. But the thing is, are we willing to die? Are we willing to die to ourselves? Are we fearful? No. No. Jesus won the victory for us, didn't he? He rose again from the dead. And that's what the uh, media wants to do, make us fearful and make us, uh, we do this and we don't, they want to take away our freedom. These people gave their lives to start this colony here in America. Oh, God. Okay. Oh, let's see. The enemy was still working. But this William Bradford then, he is on the passenger list. Uh, his wife um, died, uh, but there's other people here. This uh, Carver, uh, the first uh, man who was their leader, he got a sunstroke, died of a heat stroke in the next spring. Mm, uh, and the, the, his wife died of grief soon after. But then there's other ones here, other ones here that... They said, we made a promise, and God made a promise to us. We are going to obey no matter what it costs us, because they had a vision. Do we have a vision that God's going to do something? We're going to live through whatever happens, and it's going to be it cost us something. But when God made a covenant with us, he's going to keep it. I know all of you have some promises that God has given you. We sing about it, don't we? He always remembers. And do we remember? If we died with Christ, we will also rise with Christ. He is the resurrection and the life. And these people, they were willing to give their life. They saw nothing really good come of it. But... Then God had something really good planned. There's a man named Squanto. He's an Indian. And he comes on the scene. Not him yet, but there's a pilgrims. Let's see. Uh, there's a man come on the scene in the springtime. What is his name? His name is Samuel, Samuel Soy <laughs> from this other tribe. Okay, this is on page 37. It was on March 16. Time of uh, birth and hope, and the Indians' hearts were stirring in compassion. The Indians, God did this. They weren't mad at them, like, oh, this is our land. What are you doing here? They had compassion on them. So mm, uh, the settlers' hearts were still under 
still tendered to God, and the high point of their work remained Sunday worship. Always Sunday worship, always uh, praising God. On this balmy day on March 16, the pilgrims were gathered in the common house. They made one house for everybody because they had to all stay together. A lone Indian approached them and he said, Welcome in English. <laughs> and they thought, Oh my goodness, what is this? <laughs> this Indian's name was Samoset, a chief of the Algonquin tribe, and he had been around his English people. Um, on, on fishing expeditions because people came from uh, the old country and they got some of these Indians and they captured them and put them on their boat and told them, oh, you fish and you do this and you do this, which was not a good thing, but God used it for his glory. Um, but Samuel said, uh, said, oh, there's another Indian whose name was Squanto, who had been in England and could better, he had better English and he could help you. But you know, Squanto was actually captured too and taken to England and he came back and then he, they, they captured him again. And he went with, an, uh, with a Catholic friar. And this Catholic friar taught him about Jesus. Mm -hmm. And this man, Squanto, when he heard that there was, an, uh, there was a group of Americans there, he said, oh, I can speak English. God changed his heart and he said, I'm going to go help them. But that was that his land, that his tribe had all leveled and where they had buried their pot with corn. But Squanto, God used this man, and he saw the, these Americans there. He said, I know what I can do. I know how to catch the fish. They had a little eel at that time that would go in the streams. I, I've never had an eel, but anyway, they could step on the eel and catch it real easily. And they needed some protein, of course. And then they had the corn, and, and they were going to give it back to them. But they said, no, 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 we'll plant it. You plant it, I'll help you. And then he showed them where there were going to be strawberries and where there were animals, where they could get the pelt from the beaver, and the, uh, let's see, let me turn the page here. Squanto teaches them how to find the eels, how to plant corn, and he knew there's another fish coming, and alewife would begin to migrate upstream, and he said, oh, they're coming. You're going to have more fish. So he taught them, the uh, young men, how to build weirs to catch the fish. Okay, so then they were getting ready to plant the, the corn. They planted it, and they, he told them how to plant it, and he told them where the berries were and all of this. Thing. And the people from England said, this is like heaven. It's not like England where it was cold and there was mist. It smelled so good here, but they persevered. So, um, uh, Squatcher showed them how to find the beaver and, and get his, his pelt so they could take it back to England and get some money. So anyway, they were, um, they were so, the Indians were so kind. So I'm going on to the Thanksgiving. So the corn started to ripen and then they, they said, oh, let's have a celebration. So they, they decided, let's have, William Bradford wrote, and he said, please God, that the mortality rate began to cease among them and the sick were recovered. Yet there was one sadness during planting, uh, Governor Carver, age 57, uh, with planting corn, apparently suffered a hemorrhage. Hemorrhage. So William Bradford was elected the new governor, and that's what I was telling you. I had the book that uh, William Go uh, Bradford wrote down all of these things uh, about the bad things, not all the bad things. But they said he said you must forgive this Tom West, Thomas Weston, who built you of all your money. You must, he said, you must forgive. Don't take an offense. And he said we got all these strangers living together. We don't know each other. He said don't take offense. Forgive, forgive. It was so godly, I think. Wow, we could learn so much. So, okay. During the summer of 1621, the colony began to thrive. This is page 39. So many diaries recorded a sweet smell coming from the ground. Strawberries, uh, bayberries, plums, blueberries were found. 
fish were found in every stream and pond. And so they decide, let's have a Thanksgiving because they're always praising God. And they're going to tell the Indians. And the, you know, they, they declared their first Thanksgiving. Settlers ex uh, explored their neighborhood and they found a land to be uh, more beautiful, to bless their outgoing and coming in for this holy name to be praised forever, they said. So this Governor Bradford wrote, William Bradford, whose book I have here, God had honored their trust and lives being, were given to him. Bradford was so thankful for their abundance of food, he proclaimed the first day of Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Massasoit, the guy, the other Algonquin Indian, came with 90 Indian <laughs> braves. 90 Indians. I mean, those Indians could have decimated the whole colony, but they didn't. They brought all of these. What did they bring? Some deer? Five dressed deer, a dozen fat wild turkeys. Yeah. The Indian wa women taught the pilgrims how to make whole cakes and pudding out of cornmeal and maple syrup. You know, from a maple tree, you can you can get the maple syrup. And so, and, and they taught him how to make uh, popcorn. <laughs> Vegetables and fruits were in abundance, and their hearers were following with gratitude toward God. So anyway, I'm sure that they proclaimed the name of Jesus. So that's our first Thanksgiving. So they did not fight. They, they formed a treaty with them and obeyed that treaty for 40 years. Mm, God had used Squanto in a marvelous way, Governor Bradford writes, he is a special instrument sent by God. Governor Bradford himself was an instrument used by God to impact Squanto. Squanto stayed with him all his life because the Indians didn't like him anymore. <laughs> they, hey, I can speak English and I can help them. God, because he could have been mad at them because his whole colony was died by uh, what? Uh, smallpox, and they took over his land. Mm. But he said, no, I can help them. That is the hand of God. So God is helping us. We don't deserve it at all. But this is just for us to know that God is good. He has a plan for America. He is a forgiving God. We need to forgive. We see bad things happening, but we need to speak to that mountain and forgive and forgive and not take offense at anyone. And we need to work together and say, God, you are so good. We want to remember you at this coming Thanksgiving. Oh, that you have special Indians, First Nations people, and you have special pilgrims called out of darkness. You called us out of darkness, Father. So we give you glory and honor, Lord Jesus. Oh, help us to deny ourselves, to give you our will. We thank you. They didn't know. I don't know. I'm sure they knew about the blood of Jesus. They knew about the crucifixion. The pilgrims did. They knew. They knew. I'm sure they told the Indians about that and that they, they saw them worshiping together. I'm sure they always worshiped and they would fast and they pray out loud. I'm sure. And so... Father, I thank you. I thank you that you made a covenant with our country and that you haven't forgotten and that you will forgive us, Lord Jesus. Oh, that we will learn how to lay down our lives, to give up our will, to set an example, Lord Jesus. Oh, that's not about money. It's not about goods. It's about you, Father, that your name is glorified this Thanksgiving. And so I, oh, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So I want to say you can find this book. It's free. Jack and I wrote it 30 years ago or something like that. Uh, it's on our web page. It's free. You can download it or you can find out the story there. Um, the, the, the Pilgrims and then you can read about George Washington and, the, and Christopher Columbus and other heroes. We have a tremendous heritage here in America. Let's not give up 
I'm declaring that God is good. He has all plans. And I just remember, you know, Isaiah 56, verse 1. The Lord said to me, he said, Pursue righteousness and justice, for your salvation is about to come. Pursue righteousness and justice, for your salvation is about to come, and that truth will be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this, what? Justice and righteousness, and the son of man who takes hold of this. So I'm believing by faith that God is going to bring to truth the truth, and he's going to be our salvation. We don't deserve it at all. Um, but Lord, I thank you. Your word is true. So we declare righteousness will be revealed and justice and righteousness will be revealed. I thank you, Jesus. You are forgiving. You have forgiven us. You will continue. Oh God, help us to die to ourselves. Not to think about the the money or 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 anything, but Lord Jesus, you've given us authority over the devil, over sickness. Lord Jesus, these people, oh, they didn't have the proper vitamins. We have vitamins available. We have things available to us. We know the word. I don't know how much of the word they knew, but they always praised you. Oh, Jesus, you had it all planned. So I thank you, Lord. You got good plans. We don't deserve a thing, but you are so good, so good. So we thank you. So I say, dear friends, share this in other nations. I don't think they know that, and I say that God. God's name would be glorified, glorified, and that agree with us. So we agree that God's name will be glorified in the earth, in the earth, because I know they're looking to America. Amen. I know we don't deserve a thing, but Lord Jesus, you said that salvation would come to those who pursue justice and righteousness. Our salvation is coming. We don't know how, but we trust you. We have our eyes on you, not on any man, but on you, Jesus. You are the stability of our times. You are the treasure. You are the treasure that we hold, that we hold, and you're going to speak to us. So I thank you. I thank you. We bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. If you have any sickness, uh, we take authority over that, uh, that you, uh, you are not giving into fear, uh, that you're going to follow Jesus and he's going to speak to you and you're going to see miracles. So God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> thank you for listening. God bless. Bye-bye.